Okay, so there's sometimes when you look at an equation and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to do so much work to solve that equation. So for example, we're looking at an equation here and as far as what it looks like on first glance, it looks like we're going to have to take this and we're going to have to FOIL, you know, so multiply this by itself and this by itself and this by this and this by this. And it just looks like a whole lot going on just in this one little part, not to mention we have to distribute this, that, 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 and simplify it and then solve. A lot of stuff going on or not. Well, when you see an equation that looks pretty complex and like there's just too much going on, you want to try and find an opportunity to solve it a little bit in, in a little bit easier way. So if you take notice here, there's a 3y minus 2 here and there is a 3y minus 2 here. So you can recognize that maybe, perhaps, if we just call this whole thing one little thing, then we might have an easier time. So perhaps we can go ahead and call 3 minus 2 x. We can substitute x for 3 minus 2, 3 y minus 2. So let's say everywhere we see 3 minus 2, we're going to put an x. So we have it there, and we have it there as well. So what we now end up having is x squared minus 5 x minus 6 is equal to 0. Alright, so all I did was I took x and replaced it for 3 minus 2, like a substitution. Actually, it is a substitution. Alright, now that we have that done, this looks a lot more manageable. So we can factor and solve this equation here. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get negative 6 and add to get negative 5. Don't mind the sounds in the background. All right, those two numbers are negative 6 and positive 1. So now we've factored it, and we just have one more step to solve it in this form. It's not quite done, but we're almost there. So two numbers are being multiplied. x minus 6 is being multiplied by x plus 1, and the answer is 0, which means that either x minus 6 is 0, or x plus 1 is 0. Because the only way to get an answer of 0 is to multiply by a 0. So that means x is equal to adding 6 to both sides here. x could be equal to 6, or subtracting 1 from both sides here, x could be equal to negative 1. But again, we're not done. Remember, initially, we created a relationship that 3y minus 2 is x. But the equation originally wanted us to find y. There was no x. We created that. So in order to finish this question, we have to figure out what y is. But since we know that 3y minus 2 is x, and we now know that x is either 6 or negative 1, we can solve. So we have here 3y minus 2 is, in the first case, we have that x is 6, so let's go ahead and solve that. We can add 2 to both sides, and we get that 3y is equal to 8. Now we can divide both sides by 3, and we get that y is equal to 8 over 3. But that's just one of our answers. We still need to find what happens when x is negative 1. So 3y minus 2 is equal to x. That's the relationship we, we created. So 3y minus 2 is equal to negative 1. We can add 2 to both sides once again. And we get that 3y is equal to 1, and finally, we divide both sides by 3, and we get that y is a third. And we're done.